And hello and welcome to the bonus topic session number one. From time to time, I'll uh, record topics that I think are important, but don't fall within the intro to meditation course that Rose and I are running. And uh, don't or weren't covered in the internal map of reality course. So, but they're important topics. So for today, our topic title is Three Wishes a Subconscious. Okay, so we'll hop over to uh, the laptop. So Three Wishes Subconscious, and uh, today is the last day of the year for 2021. So I thought I'd do this one because we all have wishes for the new year. So under this topic, what I will be covering, and I'll try to keep it fairly brief, will be one, uh, subconscious realm. We will be going into that in greater detail in the Intro to Meditation course, but it needs to be talked about here briefly. Then the whole, the whole idea of three wishes that... Um, it is covered in many, many books and movies and songs about people making three wishes, and nothing can go wrong, right? Then um, we have to review the source of all pain and suffering, because this is related to the three wishes and how people end up getting pain and suffering when they make their wishes. Then, of course, no... Um, discussion about the subconscious would be uh, fit without talk about the kittens without mittens and how we can actually have wishes that are away from what we want and the solution being um, uh, having preferred outcomes rather than rigid outcomes and overall acceptance. So let's jump right into it. Uh, as I've been saying all along, the subconscious really is well over 90% of our being. On a conscious level, I like to think of the conscious as a flashlight looking around a big, big dark room, and we only see what the flashlight highlights. In the conscious, we're, you know, we're conscious of our willpower. We, we're conscious of what we can remember about our past, and we have the logical way of approaching our situation and you know, critically analyzing our way of being. But if I was to bet money, where would I put my money? On somebody that knew 10% of the subject or someone that knew 90% of the subject? So our subconscious contains all of our beliefs, our emotions, our habits, our values, our reactions, proactive reactions to things, instantaneously reacting to things. And uh, it also has a long-term memory. And I think the subconscious long-term memory is in fact more detailed and accurate than our conscious uh, filtered version. And it has our imagination and, of course, our intuition. So... When we're faced with the option of having three wishes, and if we make those wishes from our conscious mind, there's a very good chance we could make a mistake. There's a very good chance because our subconscious will not override our will. So if we ask for something consciously, our subconscious, like the genie in the bottle, will rush off to do it. But there's a very good chance, unless we have meditated and have an understanding of how the subconscious works, there's a very good chance that we'll make the wrong wish. If we make a wish that um, is... a counter to our 90%, if we consciously make a wish that's counter to our subconscious, we could actually end up in pain and suffering. So let's review the three areas of pain and suffering. 
Well, the first way we get pain is by not getting what we want. We want something, we not getting it, and we suffer. And we probably all know people who are very, very unhappy because they can't get that job or they can't get that girl or boy or whatever it is they want. There's something in their life they can't get and they suffer. And some people suffer greatly. The other way people suffer is um, they get something they don't want. And all of us have had the phone ring and someone on the other end of the phone giving us news that we didn't want. Or we've gotten that slip in, the, in our paycheck that said we no longer had a job. Something, something that has come along and it's not what we want and we suffer. And then the third way that we suffer is that we get what we want and then we lose it. You know, I know people who have lost it all. And I've lost many, many things in my life. They come and they go. So here is the trick that when we're making those wishes, we could easily make the mistake and wish and get one of these three things. And how does this happen? Well, the trick is to never wish for what you want. And you're probably thinking right now, what do you mean never wish for what you want? I thought this whole thing about the internal map of reality and meditation was to get what you want. Yes, but listen to this. If you know anyone who is extremely successful, say very, very wealthy, and if you walk up to them and say to them, hey, were you ever poor? And I bet you, I bet you a fortune that they will look at you and say, I was never poor, even when I only had one penny in my pocket, because I knew that I was wealthy and I was going to be wealthy. So the trick to making this wish for what you want is not to wish for what you want, because your subconscious will say, oh, well, if you want something, that must mean you don't have it. You wish for something to expand. You assume that you already have it, but you only want it to grow and 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 prosper, and you want it to to become immersed in it. So, never want something because that just means you don't have it. You want it to grow. You already have it, but you want that flower, whatever it is, that plant, the seed, to grow. So the trick here is when you're conversing with your subconscious is never express not having. Express having and wanting it to flourish. Okay? The other thing never to do is never wish for what you don't want. Now this sounds really peculiar. You say, well, why would someone wish for what they don't want? Well, here's how this goes. You probably hear people saying this. Boy, I don't want to do that because I don't want something like this to happen to me. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to. I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, whenever you wish for something not to happen, the very first thing your subconscious does is it says, oh, well, in order for something not to happen, you have to basically have it first and then, you know, get rid of it. So it will attract you to the thing you don't want. So wishing for what you don't want will get you exactly that. So what do you do here? Well, you focus on what you want. And you go back to the first one. You focus on what you want, but you focus on it in a creative and expansive way. You put yourself in the position. I think back to that quote I showed in another session about Muhammad Ali. He said, you know, think you're the, you know, be the greatest. And if you don't think you're the greatest, you got to act like you're the greatest. If you're not wealthy, you got to act like you're wealthy. If you're not um, doing the job you want, you need to think that you are moving towards it and that you are actually creating that job right now. If there's something you want to do, don't say to people, well, I hope to do this, say that. I am moving towards this. This is what I'm doing. Okay? So never wish for what you want. Just go for it and be it. 
Never wish for what you don't want. Focus on what you want. Just be it. And the third thing that we could do is that we will try to keep and, and lock and uh, imprison what we have. I wrote a book called Love Birds in a Cage, which is about this last point here, where people get something, say it's a relationship, and they really love this person, they're in this, love, in this loving relationship, but they don't want to lose it, so they encage that person, they imprison them, they prevent them from seeing other people, they prevent them from even talking to or about other people, and they actually then lose that person. The best way to lose someone is to cage them. And what's the one thing that they will then want to do is to be free. So never try to uh, lock up. And, you know, if something is done and it's time for it to go, let it go. It's only when you let what needs to go, go, that the new comes. So you never wish to keep uh, hold of something. Because that would definitely create that opposite reaction okay so nothing would be really fitting unless we talk about those kittens without mittens you gotta wonder how did those kittens lose their mittens is it possible that the mother cat said to the kittens go to school but don't lose your mittens did she tell them to lose the mittens by passing that uh, command to them? The kittens were only doing what the mother cat said. Lose the mittens. How could you not lose them if, with, unless you lose them first? So in any event, telling someone not to lose something is creating a situation where um, they are focused on the actual act that you don't want them to do. So what might that mother cat said to her kittens? Well, perhaps she could have said, Here's your mittens. When you go to school, make sure you bring them home. Or she could have said, here's your mittens. Hang on to them and always keep them near. She could have given an affirmation that was a little bit more in line with the outcome that she wants. So the lesson here is, if you don't want your kittens to lose their mittens, tell them to hang on to their mittens. Tell them to bring the mittens home. So this takes us into making wishes that are actually giving you the opposite of what you're asking for. And I call those away from wishes. You're making wishes that are taking you away from what you actually want. And this is, this is an extremely common uh, event. And when we get into setting up our goals and, and working on that, the one thing that we will do is first assess our goals and look at them in terms of these three wishes. Is the goal that we've set up really something that is an away from wish? So this is very important. And this is something that, you know, before you confirm that this is what you want, make sure you're not ask, asking for the reverse. So here's a, a little one method of dealing with your subconscious when you're asking your subconscious to fulfill a desire is to put it as a preferred income, outcome rather. And so you say to your subconscious, you know, I really uh, would prefer that this water, that this cup be full. You know, that's what I prefer. It's half full now, but, you know, I kind of would prefer it to be full. So you, you set your um, desire or your wish as a preferred outcome. And what does that do? That leaves room for you to be wrong. I could be wrong about what I want. You know, maybe my 90% doesn't really want that act that I'm, or that activity or that outcome. So if I set it as a preferred, and if it's not really in line with what my subconscious, my 90% really is intuitively moving towards, then there's a chance that I won't get it, but I'll get what I actually internally in the deep within my subconscious really want. So set your conscious desires up as a preferred outcome and, you know, be willing to accept the outcome. So 
you know, I like I like this expression. You know, you accept acceptance is the simple recognition of the truth that this is the way things are in this moment. So this is the way it is. Doesn't mean it can't change in the future, but accepting for what the outcome is right now, then you can move on. Acceptance is a big one. But if you make a wish, make sure you're prepared to accept the outcome of that wish. This is why I like this particular topic and talking about it and bringing it up, because it falls under the general topic of how to communicate with your subconscious. And we'll be digging further into this as we go forward. So that's pretty much um, my little discussion, my bonus topic. As I said, I'll, um, there are many, many, many other areas that need to be, you know, just brought up and discussed. So um, I find the whole area of self-development, growth, meditation, and our internal map of reality, a huge topic area with many, many, many um, rabbit holes that we can go down. So thank you and see you in our next session.